play of the game. Hey guys, today I'm going to give you some big tips on improving your Widowmaker on console. Because contrary to PC, Widowmaker has always had a bit of a tough time being in the meta on console compared to Hanzo. Hanzo is a projectile hero, which means he does better on console than Widowmaker, who's a hitscan hero. He also strafes faster than her and can win many of those sniper duels. However, with these tips I believe I can bring your aim up so well that Hanzo players will fear you and your rifle. Now, I'm not the best Widowmaker, but football coaches don't have to be in shape either. First, I want to cover the three main styles of aiming. Tracking, leading, and flicking. All of these styles are useful in their own way, and you will use all of them to some degree. One way may be more your style than another, and that's okay. For me, I do well with leading shots, which is where you watch your target's movement and predict where they will be and just wait for them to walk in front of your crosshairs. The downside to this is if the target is aware of your presence, they will likely start moving erratically to make it more difficult to predict where they will be and land the shot. This is where flicking can come into play. I'm going to go into more detail later on on why flicking works the way it does. But essentially you place your crosshair relatively centered on your target, then flick the joystick and quickly fire the shot. Lastly is tracking, which is the ability to keep your crosshair on your target wherever they go. All these styles have situations where you want to use each one. Let's break it down a bit. Tracking is usually used for the assault rifle mode when you are being rushed by a Genji or Tracer. Don't underestimate this style's power. If you are able to land one sniper body shot, you can finish off the player rushing you with the assault mode. Don't make it harder on yourself by trying to get another sniper shot on them. Get one body shot, make them weak, then use tracking with the assault mode to finish the job. Also use the Venomai for a little help. Tracking could be used during a fully charged sniper shot, but it doesn't really add anything that leading and flicking can't do already. Leading is usually used when the target is unaware of your position or just isn't worried about your shot and doesn't try to evade. Leading is a great way to secure the kill without wasting shots. And trust me, you want to avoid wasting shots, which I'll explain later. Flicking is interesting because it's very flexible for many different situations. The downside to this style is that you can easily overcompensate and miss many shots revealing your position and the enemy will start evading making the shot more difficult. If you're used to flick shotting already then you know how frustrated you can be at yourself for missing a headshot on someone who is standing still. Now with enough practice that will not happen very often, but it happens. I have more things to expand on the flicking technique later on. Having the right focus can for sure help your shot. This took me a long time, too much time in fact because the solution was simple, but I do have a better understanding now of exactly where you should be looking when taking that shot. Take a look at this image and what do you see? Depending on your focus, you can either see the vase in the middle or two faces. So the big question for me was, well, what should you focus on? Your crosshair, the target, or both somehow? I've tried it all to see which was best. What do you think it is? Well, it's so simple I had a duh moment, which is you gotta keep your eye on the ball, aka the target. You want to use your peripheral vision to keep track of the crosshair while keeping the target always the center of your vision. And when I say the center of your vision, I mean tune everything else out except the target in front of you. The difference was almost night and day when I started really following this rule. It's easy to not do this and not realize you're not doing it. A lot of knots. In a cluster when there's three or four enemies and you don't know who to shoot, you need to pick one, focus, and commit to that shot. Try not to let the other targets get in the way unless the situation changes and you need to switch targets. So again, keep your eye on the ball at all times. I want to give a quick tip on sensitivity. I believe you should have your scoped in accuracy to at least 50. I myself prefer lower sensitivities, but with the new dual zone aiming system, it's a lot safer to go higher in sensitivity without sacrificing accuracy. This also helps really well when you need to quickly snipe someone who is rushing you at a close distance. At longer distances, you don't want to rely on the high sensitivity. You want to rely on the next tip, 
which is to use strafe to fine tune your shot. I mentioned this in my McCree aiming video, but I'm bringing it up here because that's how important I feel this tip is for improving your Widowmaker. Strafing doesn't change your lined up shot all that much the way right joystick movement can. You use the right joystick mainly for centering on your target in the general area and the left joystick to fine tune it. Of course there are exceptions, but usually this is what you want to do. The most important thing to remember when using strafing to fine tune your shot is to not walk front and back. When aiming you want to deal with just the X and Y axis. Make your shot two dimensional. When you walk forwards and backwards you are adding another dimension that you have to compensate for, thus making it more difficult. Not impossible, just more difficult. It may not be that noticeable if you're on the ground shooting directly towards your target, but if you have to hit a ferret out of the sky or are aiming downwards from high up, then this can really mess up your shot. So make it easier on yourself and keep your shots two-dimensional. And again, remember to use your strafe to fine-tune your shot. Now for shot wasting. Wasting shots are when you're just spamming your sniper shot trying to hit a target. The biggest reason you want to try to avoid this is because Widowmaker telegraphs her presence every time she takes a shot. So it's important to make them count because shooting a bunch of shots and missing just tells the enemy to focus you down or simply make evading movements. At that point you probably need to just relocate and try again. A good Widowmaker knows she's got to keep moving around. The most ideal shots on your enemy are when they don't know you're there and they make it easier for you. Once you take a few shots, you should move somewhere else if you start to feel the pressure from the other team. Knowing when to move and stay comes with experience. This last tip I also brought up in my McCree video, but I want to reiterate and add some important details to it. And that is to not overthink your shots. In your journey to improve your Widowmaker, you're going to be very self-aware or conscious of a lot of how your performance is going. But ultimately, you want to get to a point where you aren't thinking of your shot any longer. There is a Japanese term called Mushin, meaning no mind. It's a level martial artists reach after years of training when they no longer fight thinking about their moves. They just do them instinctively. You see, your conscious mind is too slow to process things as fast as your subconscious mind. I like using the example of catching a ball. You don't consciously calculate where the ball is in 3D space and try to calculate the interception point where your hands should be. You just do it, and it took years of your childhood to get comfortable catching a ball instinctively. This is the same process that's happening when you're perfecting your sniper shot. During the beginning of a match, if you have a bad start, you find that your performance for the rest of the match might be worse if you let it get to you. If you have had this happen, it is likely because you were frustrated at yourself for missing those initial shots and felt that the solution was to be overcritical of yourself and analyze each shot from here on out for the rest of the match. You also dwell on those missed shots, constantly making your mind trapped in the past. What you are actually doing is overthinking your shot with your conscious mind, resorting to the slower reaction time method and almost guaranteeing you will miss a lot more shots. You are also not allowing yourself to be in the moment by dwelling on the past. Don't let the frustration get to you. If you find this is happening, there are some things to help you refocus on what's in front of you at the moment and not the past failures. First, name three things that you see on screen right at this very moment, like your health bar or the color of the building in front of you. Next, name three things you hear at this moment, voice lines, footsteps, etc. And finally, name three things you feel at this moment, like your hands on the controller. I got this tip from sports psychologist Steve who works with athletes and has done some gaming advice on podcasts. It's a great way to bring you back to the moment without sabotaging the rest of your match. So what if I told you there was a way to deliberately tap into your faster, more responsive subconscious mind whenever you want? What if I told you that you probably already know how to do it and don't know you know that I know you know? And that's flick shotting. This is why flick shotting works so well. You see, when you flick the shot, it's like an easy access point to your subconscious. By flicking, you are deliberately tapping into your subconscious mind and your instincts to help you make that shot, rather than just trying to manually line up your shot with your slower, conscious mind. This is why you see a lot of pros do this, and it looks amazing from an audience perspective. Flicking can be used in most situations, but if someone is standing still, just take my advice and play it safe and strafe into the shot without flicking, at least in the beginning. 
So again, flick shotting forces you to not think too much about your shot unless your subconscious mind and your muscle memory and your instincts work itself out because it can calculate multiple things at once that your conscious mind just simply can't do. Wow, so uh, that was a bit longer than I anticipated. I hope this works for you guys. What do you guys think of these tips? Do you think I missed anything? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that's all for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Chit, and I approve this message.